Tatiana, congratulations on your success so far. You won an award at the Creek's Choice um, Awards a couple of weeks ago, and you're also nominated at the TCA. That is so exciting. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. Thank you. Um, so you've had an exceptionally good couple of weeks. Um, where did all this come from? Are you surprised that Orphan Black has hit such a, a nerve? Yeah, I'm definitely, definitely surprised by the reach of it. Um, I, I always knew it was kind of a, a special show just because I, I really loved it. I, I just felt it was weird and kind of unique and, and not like anything I'd seen on television. So, uh, and that was just, you know, in reading, in reading the scripts. So I knew that there was something special about it, but I'd never realized the kind of um, the scope that it could have that it could reach and the kind of the varying demographics that would be interested in it and and the fact that it would be successful like this I mean it could it's kind of a fringy weird show and so it's it's really nice that it's got this this buzz about it so how have things changed for you in the last say six to twelve months do you notice a big difference when you're out and about um, every now and then, uh, it, it, honestly, the biggest change I think for me was just taking on the part and um, and the kind of uh, the work that it demanded and the and the change in in myself as an actor that it demanded and and uh, just you know being responsible for for ca carrying a show or for leading a show. Um, I'd never done that before, so so I think the change for me was a kind of a gradual thing that happened over the process of shooting and, and everything and. This other stuff is like, it's crazy. It's, it feels a little bit like, you know, separate from, from me and from my work, but, but it's wonderful and, and kind of hard to sort of take in. Do you agree that the critics have essentially put Orphan Black on the map? And um, how important do you think critical support is for a show like yours? Yeah, oh, I think it's everything. It's absolutely everything. <laughs> the, the, the reason people are watching it is because you know, five people watched it once and started talking about it and, you know, blogged about it or um, or reviewed it or whatever. And, I, the, you know, we live in such a, a world of social media and of, of all of that stuff, and so it just can really catch on. And I, I don't think we would be anywhere if we didn't have any, if we didn't have people talking about it. Because we have no, like, star power behind the show. There's nobody... That you know, like I mean, we've got like Maria Doyle Kennedy, who's amazing, um, but like I'm not anybody like that. That you know, people would bank on sort of thing. So it's kind of great that that you know the fans talking about it gets gets word out there, and um, you know Patton Oswalt tweeting about it or whatever. Like it's like all these things that that kind of just give it visibility, and yeah, we would be nowhere without it. Absolutely, um, it's such a fascinating concept. And to me, it would be like an actor's dream to be playing so many roles. Is that a fair comment? Was that something that you were just like really excited to kind of sink your teeth into? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Sarah alone, the, the lead character, was compelling enough to me that I was fascinated with the story, with her story. But add on top of that the fact that it was this insane acting challenge and, and this uh, wonderful kind of like, I don't know, like dream, dream role, like you say. Like it's just... There's you know six women that I get to portray, and each of them is unique, and each of them is well well written and well developed on the page and in the script, and has their own life entirely. So what what more can you ask for, really? You know, as an actor. Um, what was the audition process like for a show where you have to play multiple characters? I mean, I know Sarah Manning is the main one, but did you know all of the clones you would end up playing during the season, or did any of them take you by surprise? Yeah, Helena wasn't w wasn't part of the audition process, so that one kind of came out of nowhere. Um, Rachel at the end wasn't was was somebody who came out of you know, I think I I found out about her about three episodes maybe before we started shooting her. So, you know, there was there was creation throughout the process. Um, but as far as the audition went, uh, I, th I think I did I think I did like three or four auditions altogether, and the last one was like screen test with the Felixes, so I, I met Jordan and completely fell in love with him, and, uh, and then uh, got to, I got to do four of the characters, like Sarah, Sarah's Beth, Allison, and Kasima, and uh, yeah, it was just kind of a trip, like, I mean, you just sort of have to commit to it and, and dive in, and all the execs are sitting there watching you go, and now I'm just going to put on this 
these glasses and now I'm a different character and now I'm going to put on the, you know, and they're kind of re really privy to your process. So it's, it's all very transparent and kind of freeing f for that reason. You know, there's, there's all these clones that we've discovered throughout the run of the first season. Um, some are alive, some are dead. They're all from different countries. They all have different upbringings. Can you talk us through the challenges of shooting scenes with multiple clones? I, mean, I know you've probably taken um, people through the technicality of how it's done, but mm -hmm. it's just remarkable how the show is put together. It looks so seamless, but is it really quite challenging to do? It is. The, you know, the first few times we did it, it, it took a long time, and it always did take a long time because the more we got better at shooting clone scenes, the more kind of cool things we tried to do with them, you know, so like by the end of the season we have a, a scene where Allison pours a, um, a glass of wine for Cosima and that was a nightmare to do, <laughs> but, but we got into the point where we could kind of play with it and like really test the limits of the, of the technical um, the magic of it. Um, but it is, it's a crazy process because we shoot the same take three times over but with three different changes within it. So I'm going away for an hour and a half while the crew sits there and waits for me. And wow. then I come back and we shoot it again and the cameras memorize the moves that it does and we have to get it perfectly right. And the incredible thing is they can actually watch it happening back on, you know, just like us here being on the same screen. <clears throat> you know, so I can make sure that my eye line is just a little bit lower or I'm not putting a wine glass through my face or you know what I mean like <laughs> breaching my my own skin or whatever so it's it's amazing the technology is so advanced but but it is a very slow process because ultimately it comes down to those little details selling it you know one of the things that people always mention is the accents um, you've really I must say mastered those accents so wonderfully mm -hmm. um, and everyone always gives you compliments I'm sure about it but Paula wants to know from our chat room, do you ever get the accents mixed up? I think, um, I mean, I don't know that it's the accents that I get mixed up, but I definitely do, like, it's like a placement thing a little bit more, you know, that uh, my I'm, I've been playing Sarah all day, so mm -hmm. my voice is deeper or darker, and so it's harder to kind of get up to where Allison is, mm -hmm. um, because she speaks in a higher register and breathes higher. Um, yeah, the accent stuff, I'm so lucky to have an amazing dialect coach who watches me because I would be lost without him, you know, because I think everything would get quite confused and, and he's really good about while I'm changing over into the next character, being there with me and working through the sounds and, and just monitoring it, and yeah. Mm. Um, now, one of your showiest roles is playing the crazy homicidal Ukrainian that we yeah. all love to hate. <laughs> um, who is out to kill the others uh, and you know we're not sure what's going to happen after the uh, season finale but I'd like to know what is it essentially like to be trying to kill yourself throughout the season does that ever occur to you? <laughs> um, yeah I think yeah I mean I never I never really thought of that uh, <laughs> there but I think I, I switched it a little bit because in my head Helena was as much as she was trying to kill Sarah, there was a part of her that also was in love with Sarah and loved Sarah, which is maybe even weirder than trying to kill myself but being in love with myself. But like, uh, you know, there, there's there, there's something so fun of, and I always feel like, you know, when I'm playing Helena, then I'm Helena, and it's a different, you know, Sarah is Sarah, she's over there, and it, it it's quite easy to to separate when I'm doing it. But somebody asked me the other day, they were like. Um, they were like, do you think it was good for, do you think Helena should have died? And I was like, Gah. and I couldn't kind of separate the two, because in, in Helena's head, she doesn't want to die, like, obviously she's not, she's like, no, and Sarah would have wanted to have her dead, you know, so it was a hard, I couldn't kind of split the two in my head, it was bizarre. Mm. Um, yeah. I, you probably get asked this a lot, um, and, and it's a pretty obvious question, but you, everyone wants to know, you know, who are your favorite clones? And I have a favorite, and we all do. As watchers, we all kind of gravitate to the one that we think is, you know, the coolest, or I think Alison's hilarious. I think I'm watching Desperate Housewives when I'm watching her. Right. Uh, who, who is your favorite clone? Yeah, I love Alison. I love Alison um, because she is kind of in this other world entirely. Um, God, I don't know. They're, they're all, they're, it's a really hard question because I just, I love them all and I love exploring all of them and um, they're each in their own kind of world. Uh, 
but Rachel is one that really excites me because she's so vastly different from the rest of them and she's kind of uncharted territory for me. I haven't I haven't gotten to sink my teeth into her quite yet and uh, just got a taste of her last episode. So it's it's fun to to have a new territory to kind of delve into. Mm. Yeah. Um, let's just go back down the awards track for a second because this is obviously what we're all obsessed with as we're being a big awards nerds. Um, <laughs> like we at Gold Derby, we think that you especially and the show are one of the stories of this Emmy season um, because you've really kind of come out of nowhere in comparison to a lot of the other shows that get a lot of attention. The critics yeah. have put you on the map. Um, and uh, any voters really do um, appreciate actors who take on multiple roles, uh, like Sally Field in Sybil and Tony Collette mm -hmm. in um, the United States of Tara a few uh, years ago. Yeah. And so we think that you actually got a really good chance of um, maybe being nominated. And I know that sounds to you like you know, something that you probably don't even want to think about yet. But yeah. um, if you were nominated, you have to pick your favorite or your highlight episode of the season. Have you given oh. any thought at all to what your your best episode of the season was? Oh, is that right? You have to yeah. you have to pick one. Yeah, you have oh. to submit one to the ju to the jury who um watch you know all six episodes from all six contenders in the category and then they vote. Um, okay. When, yeah, so you should really start giving that some thought. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. God, I don't. I I, oof, I don't even know. It's, I don't know. There's there's so many that I was really excited about, but I don't. They kind of all blend together in my head a little bit because mm. I was kind of you know it was so much my brain was on on like was mush by the end of it but um i loved episode 9 i thought episode 9 was quite strong um just because you see all of the women sort of at at like the peak of a, a conflict and at at a point where they kind of can't go back and they can't like their lives have changed forever and um yeah i really liked episode 9 just the tension is sort of you just see them all dealing with it. You see them all, you know, you see Sarah with Kira and um, that to me was, that to me is the heart of the show really, you know, the Kira, Felix and Sarah sort of, you know, family. Um, so to see that kind of come to a boiling point was was really, uh, really fulfilling to do and really in, in, enjoy, enjoyable and hard to do. But um, yeah, I think that one came off quite well. Well, all the um, all of our guests in the chat room are all frantically trying to tell me that episode nine is absolutely your best episode. Um, okay. They all loved it. Uh, the finale is <laughs> good too, I must say. You re the the finale is really really impressive as well. And so is the pilot, to be honest. But mm. episode nine apparently is where you showed a lot of range and impact, and uh, these are all the things that Emmy voters um, want to see. And so, if it happens, you know, if it does happen for you. Maybe just remember this chat, and um, if you yeah. if your PR reps will be on your back trying to pick your best episode, and I think episode nine is probably the one to do that. Awesome, so, awesome. There you go. So you've learned cool. something today. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I'm going to go to the chat room now and see um, if there's any other questions that um, someone wants to ask you. Someone here is um, wanting to know that people are confused about Helena and what's actually happening with her. It was kind of mysterious. I guess you could call that mysterious, what happened in the season finale. I don't want to spoil too much in case people haven't seen it. A lot of people are binge watching it now because they're all yeah. jumping on the bandwagon. But what right. can you tell us? If anyone hasn't seen this season, just close your eyes and block your ears. But what, yeah. is, what, what can you tell us about what happened in the finale and what we can look forward to in season two? Um, I, I mean, I met with John and Graham and, and got to talk to them about season two, and I definitely don't want to give anything away because uh, there's so so much, you know, the cool thing about the show is that, <clears throat> like the finale, you know, the, the writers sort of write themselves into really difficult places, and I mean that in the most complimentary way. They sort of, they, they, aren't, they aren't scared to take huge risks with the characters and huge leaps and shift the characters and change them. I mean... Allison, we see her change quite um, for for the for, you know she, she there's no going back after episode ten for Allison. You know she's sort of done something uh, this changed her forever, right? So mm -hmm. I think the cool thing that we can expect from season two is the same kind of is is not only dealing with everything that happened in season one and and how how their lives have changed, but um, con continuing that amazing tradition of sort of putting painting them into corners and seeing how they get out of it. I mean, we see it in in the pilot even, 
you know, Sarah stepping into a world, into the cop world that she doesn't know at all. And she's completely ill-equipped to deal with, but sort of, you know, you put her in the most difficult situation. She's in front of a panel of people and she has to, like, talk about a, a, cry, a case that she has no clue about. And how does she get out of that, you know? And I think that's, that's what, what's so great about the writers. And, and I'm, I know that'll continue next season. Do you, think, do you think that the possibility of seeing many more clones is, is possible? Or, I mean, is it just endless that we might expect to see more characters next season? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, have no, I have no idea, but I, I would assume that there will be some more exploration. You know, the show's about identity and the show's about, um, you know, playing with this idea of multiple identity and multiple kind of versions of yourself, and so I can't see that there wouldn't be. Some more and, exploration um, of that. Yeah, I guess uh, we, uh, it's something that we just all have to look forward to. Um, yeah. And I must say, given that the way that the first season unfurled, um, it was so not predictable for a viewer like myself. Um, so I can imagine that whatever I think might be happening next season, it's probably just going to be the exact opposite anyway. So we <laughs> might as well just sit back and enjoy. Exactly. Um, you know, a, a lot of people in the chat room want to know whether you want Cosima to live. I mean, I can't imagine why you wouldn't want her to. Whether I want her to, of course yeah. I do. Of course. She's one of your I babies. Why would you not want her to? My baby. I love her. <clears throat> I, yeah, oh my God, yeah. Absolutely. Um, Fight what, to the death for her. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Now, what playlist do you um, have playing in your, in your head when you're trying to get into her headspace? What, what music do it's, you listen to? It's a lot of electronica. It's a lot of kind of like beeps and boops. It's like Diplo, um, I listen to Grimes, uh, I listen to, what else do I listen to? Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Yeah, that kind of stuff. I'm trying to remember, it's been a while since I've looked at that playlist, but, but it's mostly that kind of stuff. Okay, and, yeah. um, and we might as well ask about what, how you get into the Allison headspace, because that's the one that I look forward to the most. <laughs> that's musical theater. That's all musical, musical theater. theater. Yeah, Good yeah. Stuff. And uh, ballet, you know, she's always dancing. Yeah. Um, someone's asked here, uh, 42B5 wants to know whether it's possible that there may even be, you know, transgender or a clone along that line, so maybe a transgender one. Has that ever come up or is that something that you still haven't really heard about yet? I haven't. No, that's, that's awesome though. That's such a cool, you know, I mean, the cool thing is that the sexuality of the characters is sort of, another exploration of their identity, you know, and I don't think they're, they're kind of controlled by biology or by any of that stuff. You know, it's kind of an interesting, it's an interesting, definitely an interesting exploration that would be. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what's coming up for you, Tatiana, now that um, Orphan Black is out there in the ether and people are enjoying it, um, are you getting a lot of um, offers for other jobs? Yeah, it's been, it's been good, you know, it's been the really generous offers and everything. Um, I'm kind, I kind of, you know, went away for a little bit just to regroup and not work and, and just be a little bit of a, a human being for a bit. But, uh, but yeah, I'm really, really raring to, to go again, and I'd love to do something quickly before we go back to shooting. Awesome. Well, look, we wish you all the best. We think that um, you are a really serious threat for an Emmy nomination, and uh, I have a fingers crossed for you. I've got you in my picks. I think you're in the top ten oh. all up. Um, and that would be really exciting for a show like yours to get it um, even more out there. And so thanks a lot for your time today, Tatiana. We appreciate it and good luck to you. Thank you for your support. Thanks so much.